At this point, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sakara will deliver to us an uninterrupted 20-minute presentation, after which we can interrupt him with applause. Can you resume your seat? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to thank the IAEA for this opportunity to share with my fellow countrymen and women the vision of the Convention People's Party. We have a long track record, and we will go into that later. I want to acknowledge the presence of the presidential candidate of the PNC, and the Centre Raj, and thank them for coming to support us on this occasion. I also thank my fellow comrades and colleagues, my senior comrades, who have made it possible for a successor generation to come to the helm of affairs at this time in Ghana. We also warmly welcome our fellow comrades from the two other divides, the national Democratic Congress and the new Patriotic Party. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to begin by putting into context what it is that the CPP wants to do. But we must first tell our story as a nation. Where have we come from? Where are we going? What do we need to do to get there? And what lessons have we learned from our 55 years as an independent nation? To have any interventions without this background would be to risk repeating the same mistakes that we have made in the past. I begin by stating clearly that I share in the CPP's vision to establish in Ghana a strong society in which no one will have anxiety about the basic means of life, about work, shelter, food, where poverty and illiteracy are no, longer, no longer exist and disease is brought under control and where our educational facilities provide all the children of Ghana with the best possible opportunities for development of their potentialities. This vision of our founding fathers remains as relevant today as when it was first conceived. For our generation, we face pretty much the same challenges. The main difference is that Ghana, which was once on its way to being a shining example of a self-reliant nation that Africans will build, is now only a shadow of its former confident self. The essential software to run the nation is patriotism born of selfless commitment to the pursuit of a national agenda. We must ask the question, have we really been pursuing a national agenda in the last 20, 30 years? Or have we been pursuing our own parochial partisan interests, trying to prove who has the best ideas, not towards the building of a nation, but towards the maintenance of power and privilege? The infrastructure which we need, the hardware, we inherited, but that has been neglected. And it has not kept pace with our needs. In summary, the opportunity for advancement at a critical moment in time when the world was more idealistic has been lost. Now we face from the prices in the marketplace so that we can make targeted interventions that will make them competitive. This is the only way. 
And we must not do that only in terms of investment in infrastructure, availability of capital, but we must also look to our trade policy to ensure that they do not face unfair competition. Our strategy will focus on job creation first for our youth. And we will do this by ensuring that first and foremost, those of our children who are unfortunate enough not to pass the BECE exams are not cast on the dustbin of humanity. We will institute opportunity industrial centers in all districts to ensure that they can develop trade skills for life. This will be an important measure that will ensure that they also continue to be educated in the basic reading and writing skills that we will need them to have for a technological society. They will also have the opportunity to even retake their VCE exams after one year. And we want to assure the youth that the, the Convention People's Party is a party that cares for everyone. And we will leave no one behind. If you want to see a good example of this, look at the OIC Center in East Legon and the kind of people who are going there now with their own resources. But many of our people in the rural areas cannot come to Accra, so we have to take that opportunity to them. The cost of this program will be met from a youth development fund that attracts 1% of VAT to bring a total to a total of 16% VAT during our first four years in office. Supplementary funds may be drawn from the Petroleum Heritage Fund as needed for specifically and exclusively targeted expenditure to support this program. We object to the amendments that were made to the use of this fund in Parliament, allowing it to be drawn to support our recurrent budget. This is not the purpose of such a fund. Because we know well that with the leaks that we have in the system, we could whittle away what we have kept in store for a future generation. The Convention People's Party will want to use that money to build a future for future generations. As a combination of this program, we will attach a six-month basic military training course for all the 18-year-olds. This country needs to rebuild a sense of patriotism, discipline, and honesty. That is the software of building a nation. And you cannot do that with the current system that we have. But the OICs will provide us an opportunity to do that. Those who go to university will be required to help with basic teaching of the three R's in the OICs one year after completing their university course. This will ensure that our teachers in the primary cycle are upgraded to support a much increased program at the secondary cycle. A total of 300,000 youth will be trained per year through the OIC programs throughout all of the districts. We will encourage churches and civil society nonprofit organizations to help establish some of those OIC programs. We will also encourage those of our members in the diaspora who have gained significant technical skills to take charge of a group of these OICs and manage them so that there's proper supervision to meet standards, not only of the professions that they will be undertaking, but also to infuse in them the work ethics that we need to be a successful nation. The CPP will give pupils that fail the, the BECE exam 
a lifeline to build their, their lives and also build vocational skills. We will also ensure that we create jobs in the mainstream of our economy. In fact, our interventions in the OIC will begin to create the pool of people that we need when we are making investments in the mainstream of the economy in targeted areas to ensure that we have comparative advantage for those investments where we can develop manufacturing capacity and also our agriculture. The first investments will be to look at how we diversify beyond our current crops like cocoa and oil palm. We will want to add on additional plantation crops like sugarcane and almonds. For the sugarcane, we will seek to establish over 200,000 hectares of sugarcane in the Middle Belt Zone as medium to commercial scale enterprises to bolster the food supply and raw material supply beyond what we produce in our small scale sectors. We will not abandon our efforts to ensure there's increased productivity in the small scale sector. And we shall ensure that this does not turn into a land grab system by making sure that custodial land is included as equity in these investments and that civil society organizations take part in supervising the payment and use of dividends to help the communities where this land has come from. The key thing about such a significant investment in this plantation crop is that we will couple it in with rotations in cereals and legumes. And this will help us break our biomass constraint for the maintenance of soil fertility. Increasingly, many of the animals that come down from the north to the south come along with the crop residue decreasing the organic matter content and making sure that even the application of fertilizers does not lead to significantly improved yields. By introducing these large-scale investments, we shall restore the balance of biomass production. We shall also create the legumes that we need to be able to break the cycle of our poultry feed constraints. By introducing legumes in the cycle, will be processing soy, processing soy bean and other legumes, and that will also ensure that not only can we compete favorably in our poultry industry, but that we can also provide our children with one egg a day to supplement their, their, their nutrition. This intervention will provide the much needed demand and boost that our fledgling poultry industry needs. They are competing against the tide of highly subsidized poultry products. Not only them, many of our entrepreneurs who've chosen to establish their industries here compete against the tide of subsidized goods. We must make sure that we are able to support them by reducing the transaction costs to make them competitive in their own marketplace. Our cocoa continues to be a main source of revenue. But when you examine what has happened in terms of not the price, but the value of the product in the marketplace since independence, you will see that a town which used to buy four VWs can no longer do that. Now you need 10 tons to buy a $30,000 VW. This suggests that expanding our cocoa acreage is not the best way to go in terms of rates of return for our investment. We should rather seek to go beyond the 1 million metric tons that we have to increase exploitation of its yield potential by increasing productivity. And that way, we will be able to bring on additional yield with minimal investments. 
This will not only shore up our income, but it will also provide us the breathing room we need to be able to ensure that there's sufficient cocoa, both for export and also for beginning a cycle of processing cocoa domestically. Beyond that, we should also look at other examples where countries that fail to have the economy of scale to process their own goods, rather by the retail chains of those goods in developed markets, thereby benefiting from the use of their own raw materials. This is something that we should think about in collaboration with other cocoa producing countries like Ivory Coast around us. Our oil palm industry is a sad story. The country that has benefited the most from oil palm is the one that took its oil palm from us. Everyone knows the story. And with a significant increase in oil palm prices, we have lost opportunity to really create the wealth for investment, not only in the expansion of our economy, but also to meet some of the needs that we so often talk about. We will target nurseries to produce 6 million seedlings in our turner of office to plant an additional 100,000 acres. This is an area worth going into because of the solid prices for vegetable oils as a result of the impact of biofuels in the oil industry. Our manufacturing will begin to make sure that we make synergistic investments with our existing commitments. The much vaunted fertilizer plant that we talk about is almost 10 years away. We will make sure this is accelerated by following well tried and tested methods of collaborating across countries.